A good weekend so far. Lots of football on today. Lots of news. I've been gone for about, I was gone for a week. I took the family. We went down the coast and kind of Santa Barbara area. When the waves get really big up here, as they have the last couple of weeks, actually a couple of months, when the waves get really big up here, the move for me is to go south down by Point Conception, get underneath Point Conception, and you get the same thing. You know, I was talking about waves refracting at Steamer Lane. Well, the same thing. Point Conception kind of turns those waves and cleans them up, and instead of being 20 foot or 15 foot, they're like five to eight foot, which is awesome. It's perfect for me. So the weather, the weather was perfect. Um, and it, the other thing, you know, you get when you go south of Point Conception, and it was visibly noticeable in Santa Barbara, south, was how dry the fuels are. It, they haven't had rain, and they're 2 to 3%, 1% of rainfall average. A lot of these communities from Point Conception down into Ventura, down into Malibu, into San Diego. And we've talked about it. We talked about this last week before the fires, uh, the idea that we're going to go dry until around now, now around the 21st of January. So no rain in the forecast. Well, we're going to look at the computer models. We're just going to catch everybody up on where we are. It's a weekend thing, so I won't get too heavy on the fires. One of the things I did want to point out, though, is the smoke from these fires. I think we can see it here. I think I pulled that up a little bit. Maybe not. There it is. So you can see the smoke right here. And, you know, there's the, um, that's the Palisades uh, fire. This area here is, I think that it might be just wraparound smoke from the fires. I think I can't really tell because that's, yeah, that's more Santa Barbara. So I think that smoke is just in an eddy perhaps. But either way, when you can see the fire plume from space, you know, you got something. Um, and so there's this ongoing catastrophe because they have winter, they have um, red flag warnings and watches and fire watches and all sorts of stuff really through Wednesday for the Southland. We even have a wind advisory up here. The forecast for the next couple of days for us is more of the same. You see a little valley fog here. You see Mount Shasta here. We'll go visit that earlier later on. And you see what's left of the snow on the west slope of the Sierra Nevada. There is a, a lot of snow. We've had a lot of snow, but it'd be nice to get more sooner than later. This is the Southern California uh, National Weather Service page. And of course, the Weather Service does an awesome job of kind of laying out the basics for everybody. So this this is, by the way, this is all free information. So if you go to you know NOAA.gov, you can pull this stuff. You can get any weather service office <clears throat> in the United States, and there are many of them. Yeah, and it, they just give you the, the beat. So the, they're going to keep the elevated fire through uh, Wednesday, January 15th. That's all the way south. And then you can see some of the watches and warnings. Uh, the big ones, are obviously, down here, the red representing a red flag warning. But you have wind warnings, wind advisories. And there's a little bit... There's a little bit of a light wind down there now. We can go do that, actually. We'll take a look at some of the winds. This is in the fire zone. Um, again, the winds are expected to continue tonight and tomorrow morning. They pick up overnight, get going in the morning. The thing I picked up on these fires, first thing I want to point out is temperatures right now and the winds. We know how to read wind barbs. We've done it before, right? So that ball is like the tip of the arrow. So just picture the ball. And so that's the way the wind's blowing. So in this case, the wind is blowing from this way to this way, from east to west, offshore. But the winds are light. You can see with that how there's this ball right here. We go oh, hover over it. It's north at zero miles an hour. This one is actually a little bit onshore. This is up towards Ventura. It is west at three miles an hour. So these winds are light and variable right now, but they will pick up again as we go into the evening hours. And one of the things that I would say is, I was looking at fuel moistures and things like that. The uh, Northern California fuel moisture is much better. We had similar situations, and we have a similar situation with offshore winds, Diablo winds. It's the same thing as the Santa Ana wind condition. It's just regional names. And so we have the, we've had these winds, but we have fuel moistures that are well above where they are in Southern California. Southern California, there, right? It was it was the perfect storm of of, of wind and dry. It, it was record dry already. Well, the, re the driest it's been in Los Angeles County in recorded history, and records go back pretty far. And then you have record-setting wind events, 100 mile an hour winds, that kind of thing. And <clears throat> one last thing, I, I have a lot of friends who are firefighters. Over the years, being in this business, I, I talk to firefighters all the time. You guys are uh, guys and gals are awesome because you're in the front lines. And one of the things I learned early on, buddy of mine, uh, Tim Eckie, it lives in uh, Marin County. He's a retired fire captain. 
But he told me years ago, 30 years ago, he goes, Bill, here's what you need to know about wildfires when there's a wind over 50 miles an hour, probably over 40, but over 50. He goes, we're not fighting the fire. We're getting out of the way. We're getting people out of the way. So that, so this whole kind of like, we're, they're fighting the fire. They weren't fighting the fire. They're maybe, they're fighting it today and they're trying to fight it. But when the winds blow that hard, it, it's absolutely impossible. You just get out of the way. And that's kind of what is happening. And that's what's the potential for more strong winds tonight and then through Wednesday. So problems down there. We'll keep an eye on that. And that's all because this could have happened with us. If we didn't have rain, we get a fire spark. We probably had fire sparks. You just didn't hear about them because the fuels didn't spark. Okay, enough of that. Here is the mountain, the prettiest mountain in the world. <laughs> this is kind of cool. This is this morning. And it's interesting that kind of the moon setting and the sun coming up. Isn't that beautiful? Mount Shasta, everybody. And you got a little bit of, you see, you'll see a cap cloud develop on the cinder cone right there in the front. And then you see that cap cloud, almost a wave cloud forming, trying to form right over the peak. And that's the air being lifted up, condensing. And then we talk about ways refracting and bending. Well, air does that too. So the air goes up the west slope of the Sierra Nevada or the west slope of the Mount Shasta, cools and condenses, boom, there's your cloud. And then because it hit the mountaintop, it bends and shoots down. Well, when it goes down, it dries. So the cloud formation, so you can kind of almost see right what we got. So if I go like, I think I can do this. Yeah, so if I go, the wind goes up, cloud forms, wind goes down, moisture dissipates, dries out, and there's no cloud. And if you were to look, you would see downwind, you'd see this, and there'd be another bounce here. You're not, it's not that kind of day, but you get these bounces of these waves up and down, up and down. So when you see this, them stacked up like that, you know, you got, usually it's a windy day. And we, it is gonna be a windy day, a wind advisory through tonight and early Sunday morning, uh, or last night and early Sunday morning for these areas in the Bay Area. Makes sense, winds of gusts of 20 to 30, maybe 40 to 50 miles an hour. And again, fuel moistures, reasonable for us fortunately uh, the there's the wind advisory this green area represents sort of a coastal flood deal and that's we got some big tides this morning's tide it's high in the morning so 9 10 ish and it's up around seven feet and as it drops out it goes all the way down to a minus one so that's about eight feet of water coming and going from the golden gate bridge and that at you know through that little gap and so that adds significantly to the dangers along the coast we talk about that all the time, but the, the surf, we'll get to that, but the surf's kind of mellow right now. It's big, but it's not ridiculously big like it was uh, a couple weeks ago. Okay, so I'm going to put a circle around us. Where are we? There we are right there. Put a circle around us, and this is uh, halfway through the atmosphere. This is vorticity, right? We're at 500 millibars, about halfway up in the atmosphere, and showing vorticity, areas of instability. And you can picture the instability areas. You can see where we are pushing forward, waiting for rain. There's an inside slider. Those aren't necessarily helpful right now because they actually create a bit of a pressure gradient when they come down the coast. That's what's happening, uh, happened last night. And that's probably what we're gonna see a little bit of today. As that low gets south, it starts to create an offshore wind event. So there's the high. Here we are all the way into Wednesday morning. Big high bubble, another inside slider, kind of. Yeah, that is an inside slider. That creates a problem. That's through Sunday morning. And then here we are into Monday. And then there goes something right there. That looks a little more potential. What is that? That's January 21st. Yeah, so that's our next chance, January 21st, for some activity. So. And then it opens the door, if you'll see, boom, right? And then you see them line up a little bit. And that goes into Southern California as well. So we can look at this same model output, different um, metric. This is going to be rainfall accumulation. So what, through that same period. So you'll see, you kind of get, you get the picture, right? And then you're pushing forward, nothing, nothing, nothing. Dry through the 18th, dry through the 19th. And then it starts to push in. So this is on the 24th of January. And you see it come in. And what are we talking about? You know, light rain, half inch on the coast. Yellows would represent, obviously, more rain up to over an inch. And this is on the 25th. That's all. That looks good for Tahoe and us. But what's going on in Southern California? This is, right? That is not good. And it, it repeats this trend that we're seeing where you're 200% of rainfall average in Marin County and you're, I'm just, these numbers are just rough, but 
200% of average in Marin, 2% of average in LA, and becoming less as these systems miss that area or potentially miss that area. So not to get too morose right now because we don't know exactly um, what if those models are gonna pan out. So we'll keep an eye on that. This is interesting. That other camera kind of went off on us. That was Sutro Tower. This is um, Mammoth Mountain. And I think these might be the, these must be the White Mountains out here, huh? Yeah. Have you ever gone up to Bristlecone Pines? Oldest living, I think it's still considered the oldest living thing on earth, the Bristlecone Pine up in the White Mountains. And there's a Bristlecone Pine forest and there's a park and there's a hike and there's, you can actually see these, these trees, which you probably know about, but they, and they, they, you, you go, why do they last so long? Well, how do they live to be so old with fires and stuff? Well, they're up so high that the oxygen is thin, the fires don't really take hold, the trees are really resilient. There's a whole bunch of really interesting things. Bristlecone Pines, and there's something about being next to the oldest thing at least from what we that we know uh, and then so you're looking out this is mammoth mountain they got snow for sure that's out in the basin that is um the owens river i was out there the other day a couple about a month ago fishing it was pretty fun it's such a pretty spot this is uh the ocean beach area oops i didn't want to do that but i could do that there we go and the surf is about five to eight maybe eight maybe a little bigger tides high like i said it's dropping out fast so that is going to be a little bit uh, squirrely because it's just all that tide water coming out the gate. If you're trying to surf and stay in the lineup, you're going to get flushed down to Pacifica, basically. This is uh, Santa Cruz. They got some good swell down there. This is the tide's getting better. Swell's dropping. It's still pretty deep, um, but you can see the waves are coming in and just a really beautiful, beautiful day all around uh, Northern California, Southern California. They're struggling. And, uh, you know, our thoughts are definitely with them. And it, and, and it just opens up the, the, the conversation even more about, okay, you know, how we, how we protect our homes, how we, how we utilize water, all these, just all, it's a whole gambit of things that are opening up. Mount Shasta, prettiest mountain in the world. I, I think Fuji might be right there too, but anyway. Okay, so there you go. That's a quick one. Back from vacation, I will be more on it this week because last week I was started to do stuff and then I'm like you guys want me to do stuff you'd be like a surf dude right that's kind of what I was thinking too okay we'll talk to you uh, I I'm sure we'll talk to you tomorrow be back here